Are you sure, Demon Zanth, that you have the metal for this wager? Yes, Demon Earth. My will is made of iron. Save your foolish puns for the mundanes, Demon. Are we agreed on the terms? Yes. We shall bring two mundanes into Xanth to compete for the prize. If your mundane wins, then I will yield to you in this matter. If my mundane attains the prize, however, then I will claim victory and you must pay the price. Are the companions ready? They have their instructions. Grundy Golem will advise the mundanes that they must choose a native of Xanth to assist them in their quest for the prize. Tell me about the mundanes. One is a boy named Doug, the other a girl called Kim. Each will be lured into Xanth on a different pretext. Once they have arrived, the contest will begin. Enough talking then, let the game begin.
Hey Doug, it's Ed. How's it going? I've been fooling around with this new computer game. I know how much you hate them, and I was thinking of making you a bet about this one. This computer game is different, Doug. I'm willing to bet that once you start playing it, you'll really enjoy it. It's hard to explain, but you become an adventurer in a magical world called Xanth, and you're accompanied by cool people from there. You're making a big mistake, Doug Smith. Later. Here's the deal. If you like this game, you'll let me go out on a date with your girlfriend, Pia. If you don't like it, you can have my motorcycle. What do you think? That's a technicality we'll deal with at the appropriate time. Pay it no mind. Smart boy, Doug. I'll send the package to you by courier as soon as I hang up. Bye. Hi, I'm Grundy Gollum. Welcome to the game. It's my job to answer any questions you may have about Xanth, the game, or your potential companions. 
Most people would find this game enjoyable because you get to explore a magical world filled with interesting people, places, and things. Are you at all interested in pursuing this game, Doug? Magic, Doug. You'll find things aren't exactly as you'd expect in Xanth. I'm standing on the periphery of Xanth to talk to you right now. So will you play? Can I tell you anything else about the game rules, the world of Xanth, or your potential companions? You'll pick one of four companions from the land of Xanth to guide you through its hazards. Each one will try their hardest to assist you in your quest for a prize. Little is known about the prize, but once you've acquired it, you've won the game. Do you understand the rules so far? Would you like to learn more about the game rules? There will be another mundane player like yourself on a similar quest within Xanth. She will also be struggling to acquire the prize and will also be accompanied by a companion. You may save at any time, but if you perish within the world of Xanth, you must begin the game again. You can just call me Grundy if you prefer. Can I tell you anything else about the game rules, the world? Xanth is a magical world distinct from the world you live in. We call your world Mundania, and few are allowed to cross between it and Xanth. Most creatures residing in Xanth possess a single magic talent that they can exercise at will. Some talents are relatively insignificant, while others are devastatingly powerful. Is this all making sense? But there are other important things you must know about Xanth to win the game, Doug. Would you like to learn about them? A demonic presence is responsible for the nature of Xanth. Nearly all things in Xanth are magical in some way, and most things have names you would regard as puns. Take these punish names seriously, Doug, for they will be crucial in the success of your quest for the prize. Can I tell you anything else about the game rules? You will select one of four companions on the following screen. Each of these companions is a native of Xanth with a unique talent or power. Carefully evaluate the usefulness of their various skills as they will be crucial to you in reaching your quest. Do you understand? The four prospective companions for your sojourn through Xanth are Jenny Elf and her cat Sammy, Che Centaur, Nada Naga, and the Demoness Mitria. Jenny Elf and Sammy Cat are a team and inseparable. Jenny has the unusual talent of being able to sing a song and see into people's dreams who are in her vicinity. Sammy possesses the talent of finding the quickest path to an objective, be it geographic or conceptual. He belongs to Jenny and pays more attention to her than anyone else. Che Centaur is a young Xanthian centaur. Centaurs, as you will see, have the head of a human and the body of a horse. This gives them great speed and strength coupled with exacting intelligence. While many centaurs do not possess magical talents, Che does. He can make objects lighter, making them easier to move or carry. He is an unusual winged centaur and can almost fly. Nada Naga is a princess of Naga origin. Nagas are creatures with the head of a human and the body of a serpent. This particular princess possesses the talent of transforming herself from her natural Naga form into a completely human form, as you will see her depicted in the following screen. Although she has been inducted into the adult conspiracy, she will behave as if she has not for the duration of the game. Demoness Mitria is a female demon. Demons are unique creatures in Xanth, neither living or dead. She possesses a mastery of magic exceeding your other prospective companions, but she can also be quite dangerous. She derives much pleasure from pranks and magical mischief, and has a reputation as a seductress. Although she is vowed to serve you well in the game, beware her cunning ways. Ask Nada about that. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to discuss that topic with you. Can I tell you anything else about the... Certain of your items can't make the transition between your world and ours. Have no fear, they'll be there when you return. I'm afraid not, Doug. The barrier works in both directions. 
The book is called The Compendium and will be an invaluable reference during your travels throughout Xanth. The Compendium is a veritable tome of wisdom concerning all things about Xanth. Read it and learn all about our beautiful world. Beats me. They're pretty cool, though. They don't look like ordinary glasses at all. No problem, Doug. I'm only doing my job. Pick well. Hello, screen. Who are you? My name is Doug. What's yours? I'm Kim. I'm a mundane just like you. Except I believe in magic, and it's obvious that you don't. How do you know that? Because you're still shaped like a screen. You won't get very far in Xanth looking like that, you know. I don't care how far I get. I'm just playing this game on a dare. All the better for me, then. I'll be certain to win the prize. Say, why don't we team up and go look for this prize together? No way! You don't even believe in magic. I'm not going to saddle myself with a non-believer like you. Well, I'll see you later, Doug. Unless you stay a screen, that is. In that case, you won't last long enough for me to see you again at all. Okay, you've made it to Xanth. If you want to know more about the game, or the prize, I know about as much as you. I do, however, know a lot about this place, so if you have any other questions, ask away. As Kim mentioned, you are going to be shaped like a computer screen while in Xanth. This is a result of the way you've entered Xanth, in combination with your disbelief of Xanth as a real place. You don't believe this is a real place, do you, Doug? That's odd. It's much too early in the season for flying pigs in this part of Xanth. The stress of the transition must be getting to you. Now, do you believe this is all real? Just as I suspected, as long as you have not suspended your disbelief, you will remain shaped as a screen. Until you believe that Xanth is a real place, and until you completely believe in the magic that exists here, you will appear to everyone here as a screen. As a screen, you will be able to perform most actions, but will be slightly impaired because of your strange shape. You will occasionally require my assistance, and this is one reason I'm here. I can also offer you advice about how to find the prize and possibly win the game. Yes, Doug? Grundy should have kept his mouth shut. There is nothing I can tell you about the adult conspiracy. We will not speak of this again, Doug. Do you understand me, young man? Good. I am getting tired of discourse with you, Mundane. I applied basic skills of observation to the problem at hand. That cave was clearly a first test for me rather than you. The cave was full of traps and I feel quite gratified to have freed us. 
It's also a relief to know that I'm a companion to a mundane who'll appreciate my talents. There lives a magician in Xanth named Humphrey, who is renowned for providing adventurers like yourself with direction. If anyone in Xanth knows what this prize is or where to look for it, he does. I believe there is a town nearby where we can obtain directions to the good magician's castle. Those harmless looking fruit are cherry bombs, Doug. Be careful, they explode on impact when thrown. Look, Jenny Elf, there in the water. What is that? It's a merman, Kim. Don't pay any attention to him. Let's keep moving. No, I want to talk to him. But it will take too much time. I'm sure we're ahead of Doug. Don't you want to win the prize? Sure, but this will only take a few minutes. Look, he's getting out of the water. Hello, ladies. Hi, my name is Kim. I'm from Mundania. This is Jenny Elf and Sammy Cat. What's your name? Are you really a merman? Do you live in the water? What happened to your tail? Whoa, slow down. My name is Cyrus. Yes, I am a merman, and yes, I live in the water. But changing my tail into legs is my special talent. It's kind of painful, but I can change back anytime I want to. If it hurts, then why did you do it? It's time for me to seek out a wife. But there are no eligible merwomen in this part of the water wing. The two of you look like adventurers out on a journey. So I thought I would ask if I can walk along with you until I can find a suitable merwoman to marry. That sounds like fun. Let's get going and while we walk you can tell me what it's like to live in the water. Do you have both lungs and gills? Do you eat fish? Do you sleep on a waterbed? Kim seems to be quite a competent mundane, Doug. If I were you, I'd be a little worried if you really want to win the game. She seems all right, but I believe you won't find me lacking in any important way as your companion. From the looks of the geography, I'd say that was near the outskirts of the water wing. Yes, Doug, very far.
Hello, mundane screen and beautiful Naga princess. I am a woodwright by trade and the appointed headman of Isthmus Village. Please state your business here. The good magician Humphrey lives beyond the five regions in a big castle. The location is secret. He answers people's questions in return for one year of service. That's about all I know. Maybe your Naga friend can help you out there. Or perhaps the good magician might make an exception in your case. The town has many problems. Our worst is the dread ship that lies at anchor in our harbor. The ship is a censorship. It censors what we say. Incense rising from censors aboard the vessel pervades the town, censoring and incensing us. Will you help us rid ourselves of this damn motherfucking sucking fucking municipal malady? None of us in the village has been able to find a way beyond the pale that lies northeast of here. Only there can the solution be found. We hope you can do what we cannot. Take this strange rusty key as a sign of our gratitude, wandering screen. The fairy Nuff dwells beyond the pale and can supply you with a solution with which to douse the foul sensors aboard the ship. That's not the way it works, screen. You bring me the wood and I make it right. Good luck obtaining the solution from the fairy Nuff. Yes, Doug? No, there don't appear to be any other peers here. I do have a cousin named Pierre. I'm not sure, Doug. Do you want me to crawl under the pier to find out? Hang on, I'll be back in a jiffy. I found this anchor tied to the end of the rope you noticed. Perhaps you'll find these things useful in your quest for the prize. I'm certain this won't be the only time I come in handy, young mundane. Now please turn away so I may return to my human form and get dressed. It's alright, I'm already dressed.
That's a fine log you've got there, Screen. What would you have me do with it? It would take me forever to complete a carving suitable to the taste of one such as yourself. I must refuse your fine gift. That's a fine... Burning's fine piece of wood would surely be a loss too great to bear. I'll never do it, even if you beg. That's a fine... Well, let's see. No, I can't rightly think of anything that could be done with that truly fine hunk of tree. That's a f In this way I can be of assistance. I am a humble plain man, with an even humbler plain. While it is a plain plain, I believe it will do an adequate job planing your wood hunk. Is this what you desire? Consider it done. I'll be back before you know it with a narrower version of your log. As you can plainly see, here is the plain planed board you plainly requested. It is a pleasure to be of service to a screen such as yourself. That's interesting, Doug. It looks a little like a mundane, abstract sculpture. I didn't realize you possess such an artistic flair, but I still feel this sculpture needs a bit more. Yes, that gives your sculpture much more balance and a sense of ethereal lightness. I believe the various emotive structural motifs provide the viewer with a detached yet omnipresent viewpoint framework. Genius! Pure genius! Yes, Doug? I will be glad to slap your catapult with my naga tail, Doug. Please stand back. What did you think would happen if you kicked the bucket in Xanth, Doug? I'm afraid you've lost the game, Doug. You can either restore to a previously saved moment in the game, start over, or give up. Yes, Doug? Now that we've gotten beyond the pale, let's see where that road leads. I would be violating my responsibilities as your companion if I were to do that. Wherever you go, I will follow. Green. I cannot let you pass until you've been properly ice screened. Talking to yourself, Screen? I cannot properly screen a self-absorbed screen. Not until I ice screen you. Only after you've been properly screened will you be permitted to pass, Screen. 
Well, you have now, mundane dolt. Why am I wasting my time with you? I'm not in a good mood right now, and when I am, I still have no interest in the affairs of mundanes, let alone mundane screens. Um, flat, yes. And rather two-dimensional, now that you mention it. Ha! Your meager attempts at intimidation bounce off my screen and hit you in the face. Vulnerable? I don't even know the meaning of the word. That kind of talk will get you nowhere with the ice cream for whom I scream. The Ice Queen resides behind these walls, screen, preening and making her devious Ice Queenish plans. State your purpose here or be off. The Ice Queen has no time for idling screens. The she you are referring to is a he. Mr. Nuff resides in a booth within the fair at the end of the fairway beyond the Ice Queen's abode. Why do you seek the fear enough? A solution, huh? A solution to what? Then you may proceed, screen. Good luck on your admirable quest. What do you want, wandering screen and strange Naga person? He did, did he? What kind of solution were you looking for, screen? A censorship? This sounds serious. How many censors are set upon the deck of the ship? Ah! This is indeed a foul ship. I know it well. There is only one known solution to such a censorship. Prepare the solution by following this recipe. Come back when you've properly made it. I will instruct you further upon your return, should you succeed. Good luck.
<laughs> yes, Doug? This appears to be a cough drop bush, Doug. Each cough you hear is followed by a drop dropping into the spring. It's quite an ordinary bush here in Xanth. Why do you ask? No problem, Doug. Just wait until the next cough. <laughs> yes, Doug. No problem, Doug. Just wait until the next cough. Thank you. 
Now that you've provided the solution and two equivalent receptacles for it, I'll divide it evenly between them and return them to you. Now go forth and douse the censoring sensors. By the way, I'm keeping the pail and my recipe. Be thankful for what I've provided. On another day, I might not have been so benevolent. I haven't noticed any exploit screen. Just two goblets full of glop. This is my pail, and I've only loaned it to you long enough for you to mix that horrid crud you've got there in those lamp covers. Yes. I think you look quite nice in either of them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> At your expense, I'm afraid. Yes, get on with your dousing, mumbling pool. It's only out of extreme benevolence that I extend such a favor upon a sniveling screen such as yourself. Get on with your dousing, meddling fool. I wish to be rid of you and your Naga friend. So, Demon Santh, the mundane boy has finally come to believe in your magic. Yes, Demon Earth. Although it has cost him precious time, the girl is already far ahead. True, but there is still a long way to go. Do you think he suspects the stakes of our wager? No, he remains ignorant. I am certain that he has not yet dug up that information. Arrgh! Another of your infernal puns! Eternity is arduous enough without having to endure your pitiful attempts at humor! When you lose this wager, perhaps you will also lose your taste for wordplay! I wouldn't bet on it! Arrgh! Doug, you've done it! You've come through! 
Now that you're here in Xanth, you no longer appear to us as a screen. I must admit I'm surprised. Dousing that last sensor must have increased your belief that Xanth is in fact real. How does it feel to believe? You should be proud to have conquered the evil censorship. And now that you believe in magic, your other challenges in Xanth should be much easier to manage. Whatever you say, Doug. You've done it! The wicked censors! You've killed them! As headman of Isthmus Village, I present this token of our gratitude and respect. We're not exactly sure what sort of sword it is, but we're sure you'll find out in the course of your travels. We're taking back our key, our lamp covers, and our town rock. Do you have any final requests of us? The town rock has occupied that location in Isthmus Village for over two centuries. The story is told of how the great rock served as a projectile in some ancient type of machination, showering terror down upon its foes. Other than that, we just like it. Yeah, oh well. Not much. It's a sword. It's very old. It's got a pointy tip. That's about it. The good magician Humphrey knows the answers to almost all questions, and I'm sure he'd be pleased to tell you about this sword in exchange for some service. Very. Hmm, we can't remember. A while ago. Walk softly and carry a strange sword. It has been a pleasure to be served by such a pleasant mundane and Naga princess. See, you've been successful, and yet you've become a person in our fair land. Why do you return to my humble booth, mundane? The shortcut? Yes, I know of a shortcut to get you quickly past the five regions. But beware, this path runs treacherously close to the void, which must be avoided at all costs. Good luck, and remember, avoid the void. It looks old and pointy. Be careful who you point it at. So much for good advice from brilliant fairies. Haven't you noticed that there isn't any way out of this place, Doug? We were trying to find a prize, remember? But we've wandered into an evil place. 
The Void is perhaps the most dangerous place in all of Xanth, and I'm afraid we've blundered into it. Tales have told of people who've managed to escape, but I'm not very hopeful. I'm sorry I haven't been a better companion for you, Doug. Yes, Doug? I have no idea what you're talking about, Doug. A door? Okay, I'll give this a shot, but it better be good. When do the festivities begin? I'm waiting. I can't believe it, but I just saw that door you were mumbling about, Doug. I wonder where it leads. Could be. What do you think is making it do that? It's unnerving. Yes, Doug? If you just create a real door, we could walk right through it. But then you're busy chasing shimmering images of doors instead. Yes, Doug? All this talk about doors bores me, Mundane. Why don't we just wander around and see if there's anything real around here? Yes, Doug? A vanishing door will be of no help to us, Doug. Without finding a real way out of here, we're doomed for sure. I believe we've somehow escaped the void, Doug. This feels more like the outskirts of the region of Earth. Come drink from this spring, young man. I'm sure you'll like the taste of its fresh water. Don't do it, Doug. That water is incredibly dangerous. Now that wasn't so hard, was it, my mundane fool? You'll never win the game now. Have your feelings for me changed at all? Oh, there are plenty more insults where that came from. Why don't we play a little game of catch, dunce? Catch me if you can. It is difficult to resist the temptations of a demoness like Metria, but you'll need to do it to proceed further in the game. She tricked you into drinking from a love spring. Be much more careful with her in the future. I'm afraid you've lost the game, Doug. Because I'm asking you nicely, my beautiful mundane. Don't do it, Doug. That water is incredibly dangerous.
Beware the wily ways of a wicked demoness, Doug. She'd like nothing more than to interfere with the game. She doesn't care whether you win or lose. Drink from the spring now, my dear boy. It will rejuvenate you, make you firmer, stronger, and more able to please me. Drink from the... Drink from the spring, lest you die. This is the only water source for miles. Drink now so that you'll not expire in the desert. Drink from Drink from the spring, lest my wrath induces me to drown you in it. Fool, the water in the spring can do you no harm. Drink now, or forever hold your peace. Drink from the spring. You'll never know the pleasures you've just refused, foolish boy. There. The barrel will now open for you, stupid mundane. I hope you and your lizard princess have fun groveling around in the dirt. I wonder what happened. I couldn't see anything except the torches, but they were burning brightly. All this activity has gotten me quite thirsty. Let's go back to that spring and get a drink. Yes, let's go there right away. Drink from the spring, Doug. I was wrong before. This water is completely safe to drink. I can't imagine what I was thinking when I told you that, Doug. 
Just have a bit of water. You look parched. It was only a momentary lapse, Doug. Why don't you have a draft from the spring with me? Don't you feel like joining me in the water, Doug? I think you'd enjoy bathing with me, wouldn't you? I am pleased. Come to me, you wild mundane. So, you saw through my disguise, you impotent mundane. May you wander through Xanth without aid, foolish boy. You'll never know the wondrous pleasures you would have enjoyed with me. It's easy to say that now that I've revealed my disguise to you. I think you just weren't man enough to make the best of an excellent opportunity. That's a good question, Dolt. But just to show you how merciful I am, I'll lend you this little homing device to find her. The higher the number, the closer you'll be to her. Does Kim ask you as many questions as she asks me, Jenny? She's just curious, Cyrus. It's a sign of intelligence. But shh, look, she's starting to daydream. This part of the river always makes us mermen sad, Jenny. Did you know that these bubbles are filled with things that people have thrown away or abandoned? You mean someone has abandoned that poor dog? What's going to happen to him? There is no return from the river of forgetfulness. I'm afraid that the dog is doomed. Isn't there anything we can do about it? It's Kim's daydream, Jenny. She is the only person who can take action. All we can do is watch. Look, Cyrus. She broke the bubble and saved the dog. Hooray! She is an exceptional girl, Jenny. Not only is she smart, but she is compassionate, too. You must have enjoyed being her companion. She's okay for a mundane, I guess. She's kind of impulsive and very headstrong. But all in all, maybe she's not so bad. Well, take good care of her, Jenny. I'd hate to see her disappointed if she doesn't win the prize. Don't worry, we're still ahead. Doug is catching up, but he'll never make it to Humphrey's castle ahead of us.
Don't look at me in this state, Doug. Really, Doug, if there was ever a time for an abatement of bad jokes, this is it. Please don't look at me, I, I beg you. That foul demon has trapped me in this horrible place. In my attempts to free myself from these chains, I've exhausted myself, ending up stuck in my naga form in a less than princessly position. You looked, you impudent young man. I specifically told you not to. That's it. I'm done playing this stupid game, demons. Do you hear me, wraiths? You can find another companion for this irreverent mundane. I quit. You should have listened to Nada's request, Doug. She is a princess, you know. You've lost the game. That foul demon is... Just do as you're told and remember not to look at me. Check out the manacles binding my wrists. I'm sure there's an easy way to uncuff them. Mitria had me locked up in a second. And remember, don't even think of looking at me in this state. Turn away for a moment while I get dressed, Doug. Too late, I'm already dressed. You freed me and protected my honor, Doug. My respect for you has increased a notch. You seem to be a generally good mundane. I will continue to try to assist you in your quest for the prize. No, not in the least. I think we must have moved beyond the region of Earth, Doug. This area feels more like the region of fire. Not really, Doug. That's the order I'd expect to find them in heading south toward the gap. A gigantic chasm divides northern and southern Xanth. We're on the northern side of this chasm, which we call the gap. Humphrey's castle lies on the southern side of the gap. Well, let's see. The next one would be water, and the one after that is air, and I guess that's the last one.
Yes, Doug? It's hot in here. I feel that I'm about to expire. Really? What makes you say that? Are you really sure you want my hair up in a bun? If you insist, you're really going to owe me for this one, Doug Mundane. Here you go. How do you do? It's a pleasure to meet you, laddie. Occasionally, my ancestors have long told the legend of Mac, a fearless traveler like yourself, trapped once within this cavern. With pyrotechnics and wit, he managed to pass through the wall of fire ahead. Mac's been dead for centuries, son. He's only a legend. And I have no way of authenticating it. I was told the story by my grand fire mother when I was a wee fire youth. Some say that Mac hurled an explosive device that actually cracked the firewall, spreading the flames for a moment so he could pass through. What can I do for you now, Sonny? Are you kidding? It's unseasonably pleasant in the cavern today.
That is an ancient firecracker of Mac, son. Be careful what you do with it. Where'd you find it, sonny? You dirty rat! You made my farman run away! You was better get your sorry butt out of here or I was gonna shoot you! Ain't you never seen a heater before, boy? I believe the expression is hand over fist, son. I live here, okay? What did you do to my farmer? What cracker, kid? Yes, Doug? We've done it! We've escaped the region of fire! This must be the edge of the region of water. Are you serious, Doug? Or are you just being sarcastic? Be a wee lad, me sees. Not much meat on the small bones to chew, and a sweet naga lass in tow, me sees. Together, the two would make a fine meal, or three. Give me a reason why, and then ye may not die. Not good enough. Not good enough. Not good enough. For free? No fee? Yes, then ye can help me. Then ye shall die, stupid mundane. Don't trolls have a reputation for eating young boys in Mundania as well as in Xanth, Doug? I'm afraid you've lost the game, Doug. Are you sure you'll help me? This I require of thee. 
I've lost a small key that is of the utmost importance to me. It's lost somewhere within my home below, but exactly where, I do not know. Bring me this key, and I'll waive my usual fee. Silver it is in color, small it is in size. Just fetch the key, punk, or my fee ye will pay. The key ye seek unlocks a case in my lab. Within the case are the products of my ingenious work. If ye return the key, I may show these things to ye, but be warned, I'll only wait so long for the key. Under the bridge, as I've already told ye. Fetch me key, boy, and bring it to me lest I lose my patience with ye and exact me fee. Oh, ye will be back, of that I am sure. Ye'll not get far if ye do not find me key. I haven't the foggiest, mundane. Find me key, or pay me fee. Good luck, find the key and return it to me. Have ye found me key yet? Will ye best be finding it soon, or ye will see me exact me fee? Ye found me key yet? Ye have me key! Give it to me! Yes, this is it. <laughs> now the fun will really begin. Ye will see. For ye second test, ye must solve one of the clever puzzles I have devised. Only when ye have solved one and shown it to me will I set ye free. To attempt to solve one of me puzzles, pick it up and play with it for a while. Ye may try any of the puzzles as many times as ye wish, but I'll not let you leave until it's been done. The match puzzles are very easy, so ye must complete three.
winner. Blast. I thought that puzzle would have been harder for ye. Oh well, ye have earned your freedom and may take the puzzle with ye as well. Yep. Stay or leave. It makes no difference to me. Take this crowbar from me as well. I'm sick of it. Now buzz off, kid. Ye bother me. You've escaped a terrible danger, Doug, but I fear that more serious threats lay ahead. I sense the presence of computers somewhere near. Its name is Computer, and it is the most evil machine in Xanth. If there is one place you don't want to visit, it is Pewter's lair. I'm not exactly sure but you can be assured it will be bad. You'd be lucky to escape with your life if you wind up in his lair. Pewter takes great pleasure in entrapping any adventurer who strays near his lair. Once trapped, he is renowned for mental torture of all sorts. He'd be oblivious to the game and wouldn't give you any breaks. You're probably right about the cave, Doug but I wouldn't be too confident about your invulnerability to this evil machine. Human? Naga? Why have you intruded here? I am computer, most powerful being in Zanth. I want nothing to do with you, insignificant human. Now you'll play a real game. I will explain the rules only once. If you fail to remember them and break them in any way, your game will be forfeit. Now you are playing another unless you wish to resign. Mundane player changes his mind. Rules follow. Computer will give description and word. Player must select single letter from platform to add to supplied word. New letters spell answer to description. Place letter inside cylinder and close door. After three wrong answers, you lose. After five correct answers, you win. Game begins. Question one. Give me the name of asparagus weapons that may be found in Xanth. The hint word is reeds. Supply a letter.
correct? The answer is asparagus spears. Lucky guess. Question two. Name a type of xanthian fruit that can cause blindness. The hint word is seat. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is blind dates. Lucky guess. Question three. Name the type of shells from which the finest paper in Xanth is made. The hint word is canes. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is paper shell pecans. Lucky guess. Question four. Name the species of Xanthian beast that is four-footed and gives notoriously bad advice. The hint word is rest. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is bomb steers. Lucky guess. Question five. Give me the name of a human-headed quadruped with a horse's tail, hooves, and a cat's four legs. The hint word is male. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is Lamia. Lucky guess. Player wins round one. Round two begins. Question six. Name a delicious chocolatey Xanthian creature constantly annoyed by ducks. The hint word is Psalm. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is chocolate mousse. Lucky guess. Question seven. Provide the name of the hooded vine with sharp horns that strikes at moving objects. The hint word is okra. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is Cobra Vine. Lucky guess. Question 8. Name the type of golden insect pursued by Jason. The misguided mundane. 
The hint word is seal. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is golden fleas. Lucky guess. Question nine. Give me the name of the most controversial multicolored garments in all of Zen. The hint word is paints. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is panties. Lucky guess. Question 10. Provide the name of the small snarls that grow into huge dangerous trees. The hint word is gleams. Supply a letter. Correct. The answer is tangles. Lucky guess. Now, mundane player wishes to resign the game. Mundane player resigns game. You have provided me with much amusement. You lose. Doug, I didn't expect to see you back so soon. <laughs> What's the problem? Resign? That doesn't sound fair at all, does it? <laughs> give me, give me a second to uh, <clears throat> check on something. Oh, I, I must have <coughs> picked up a virus somewhere, which is hard to understand because I, I've been here since you <coughs> left. Yes, I <coughs> have, and that hasn't helped cure my virus. I guess I'll just... <coughs> You have to wait it out. Thanks. Ah, yes, the <laughs> report is back. It seems that <coughs> computer was unaware of your involvement in the game and stepped slightly out of his purview in ejecting you from it. <laughs> He's agreed not to cheat again, but you'll still have to find a way of defeating him in order to proceed. You know what? My coughing fit seems to have stopped. In fact, I feel altogether much better. Good luck, kid. You look like you could use some rest, too. It's good to have you back, Doug. This machine and I aren't very compatible. He took the tiles away. I wonder what he wants now. Back again, stupid human. You can never defeat me. Just try and harm me. You have no chance. You lose. Try to defeat me if you can, stupid human.
What have you done? I sense a virulent presence. I call Mary Rat. Oh, let, 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 please. I'll be back. Your mundane is doing well, Demon Earth. As is yours, Demon Santh. Are you enjoying the contest? It amuses me still, although the incessant use of magic is annoying. I shall be glad when I have one hour wager and finally banished all magic from Xanth. You haven't won yet, Demon Earth, and I don't believe that you will. If magic were to pass from Xanth, I cannot imagine what the land would look like. Florida. What's a Florida? Never mind. All right. Shall we spice up the game and inform the mundanes of the stakes of our wager? No. Let them labor in ignorance. Mundanes are too fond of your magical land. If one of them realizes that his victory would mean the end of magic, I believe he would intentionally fail in order that the land might remain enchanted. As you wish. You've made it through another tough challenge, Doug. Few are those who can claim to have defeated Computer at his own game. Hello, Princess. And greetings to you too, young man. It's been quite a while since I've had any visitors to speak of. Perhaps you'd like to sit for a while and chat. Is there a prize for winning this game? Oh, no. I just recognize the look of a ridiculous scavenger hunt. You've got plenty of time to share with me. Have a seat. Well, you could start by telling me your names. Nada Naga? Weren't you the Naga princess who was betrothed to... Um, oh, never mind. My memory is truly leaving me. Anyway, my name is Ma Anath. At least that's what people call me now. I was once a beautiful young woman with a rich life in Xanth before me. I was betrothed to the handsome Prince Grolf. The day before our wedding, a demoness with evil intent poured a beauty reversal potion into my mouth as I slept. When I awoke, I was as you see me now transformed into an old woman. Ever since that time, I've lived here on the border of the region of air, cut off from a society that doesn't want me or appreciate my suffering. I have become an anathema to them, an outcast shunned and disliked. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. There is but a single drop of the evil fluid left in its vial. I would not dare to place it into your hands, for it has wreaked enough havoc already. No, never. Not really. 
The evil demoness said that I should wait for a sign from the mountaintop. It is a confusing message that I do not understand, and I suppose I never will. Uh, yes. Far to the north is an especially large mountain. I sometimes venture to a pasture near here and gaze at it. It is quite large. Some sort of sign, I suppose. Why, thank you, young man. I've been practicing my oratorical skills on myself for quite a long time. Oh, if you'd seen me before the transformation, you'd realize how wrong you are in that regard. I'm sorry. I'm barely able to gather enough food to survive, let alone entertain guests. Please forgive me, but the evil affliction has made me weak and miserable. Take it, child. I have no use for it anymore. I probably won't make it to another winter. of air. You help me, me help you. Give me job, I will do. Mela he mundane with Naga girl. Why come here? Me and boy live alone. Other ogres like us not. I drank from beauty pool and got pretty. Too lovely for ogre men. They laugh and hate me. I think not. Beauty and love spring we've got. No ugly pool in sight. Only will tell after you make all well. Crunch you I will next time. Help me and boy return to tribe. Help you! Help for free! Now I go climbing tree.
Greetings, mundane and naga. You stand before the guardian of the mountain. If you wish to pass, you must correctly answer the ten riddles of the mountain. Shall we proceed? Very well, brave mundane. Prepare to answer the next riddle. Answer the following riddle if you are able. Give me the name of a mundane action that is, like most things mundane, almost certainly incorrect. Correct. You have correctly answered another of the riddles of the mountain. Very well. Answer the following riddle if you are able. Give me the name of the species of the animal known as the Dog of Skies, Master Mutt of Mayhem, and the Curious Canine of Canopus. Correct. You have correctly... Very well. Answer the following riddle if you are able. Give me the name of an opening in walls, allowing light and wind to enter a structure. Correct. Very Answer the following riddle if you're able. Give me the name of a mundane construction aimed specifically at disrupting the natural order of things, particularly regarding the atmosphere. Correct. Very well. Answer the following riddle if you are able. Give me the name of a mission in search of a particular item or objective. Correct. Very well. Answer the following riddle, if you are able. Give me the name of one who tirelessly seeks to cause his victims to lose interest in all things said. Incorrect. Correct. You have correct. Very well. Answer the following riddle if you are able. Give me the name of a piece of wood propped up horizontally in a wind tunnel. Correct. Very well. Answer the following riddle if you are able. Give me the name of a carrying case for personal necessities designed specifically for use while in flight. Correct. Very. Answer the following riddle if you are able. Give me the name of a factory in the far north that purifies unimaginable quantities of oxygen for the people of Xanth. Correct. Very. Answer the following riddle if you're able. Give me the name of the easiest thing ever imagined to be. Correct. You have correctly answered all of the riddles of the mountain. You may now ascend the mountain.
this is it! The sign! Is this from the mountain top? It's working. I can feel my skin tightening. You've saved me from this misery, young man. Take this evil potion away from me and dispose of it somewhere no one will ever find it. I'm off to find Grolf. Maybe he's waited all these years for me. Thank you, you dear boy. I must go now. Take care with the potion. I'm beautiful again. But Ogre Man will must find boy and go. Not many trees here will be easy. You are good mundane. Farewell. Chasm is southeast. Walk quickly! Avoid the beast! Do you approach the gap chasm, foolish, mundane, and naga princess? I wasn't asking you a riddle. It was a question. Why are you heading toward that most dreaded of crevices? What certain magician? Know him well. Well, at least you're headed in the right direction. Why do you seek Humphrey? A game? You'd attempt to cross the gap for a game? Both. But I still don't understand why you're going to the gap. You did say you were headed that way, didn't you? And this is all for what? Believe me, it's bad. A horrible dragon lives within the dread crevice. He'll kill you for sure. Not at all a pleasing prospect. I'm sure getting fried by a dragon isn't going to help you win your game. Well, I can see that you're eager to move on. So, I'll leave you with one final word of advice. Don't go into the chasm. There are three invisible bridges across it and a secret way around the area where it meets the sea. I want to die. It wasn't a threat, so don't expect me to do it. I asked because the gap you approach has contained within it the most terrible of reptilian beasts. Avoid this creature at all costs. 
The bottom of the chasm ahead is littered with the bodies of foolish adventurers like yourself who paid the warnings no heed. I'm not talking. Do you see my lips moving? Copperheads have a unique ability to communicate without speaking. No. Fool! Impetuous fool! As you will, foolish boy. I'd like to see you talk that Naga princess into descending into the dread gap. Then lie with the bones at the bottom of the gap, fool. Stop! We've got some things we need to discuss! You must speak to me about these important, important things. The weather, for example, has been very poor today. It, it, it must be approaching freezing and the humidity is decidedly in the uncomfortable range. Oh, are you as interested in the weather as I am? Oh, yes, and the barometric pressure has been approaching unprecedented levels during the last few weeks. It's positively, absolutely uncanny. Of course not. Have you noticed the field mice population around here is diminishing significantly as of late? Oh, yeah. Uh, did you say you wanted to talk about my family? Oh, well, Edna has been taken slightly ill all this week. She's having a cud disorder of mammoth proportions. And Benice thinks she's going to have triplets. Just think of that. Have you thought about what you're going to be wearing this season? It, it, there's just so many decisions to make. I mean, were you thinking of uh, cotton coordinates and maybe more traditional clothing? It, it, it's cool out here, isn't it? I'm, have, have you been considering... The... Uh, wh why, yes, I am. I'm, how perceptive of you, mundane. But anyway, Uncle Fred says that the house has been totally, totally destroyed and all his equipment has been ruined. I mean, it'll be quite a long time before he... Very well, I mean, if that's the way you want it. Uh, goodbye. Oh, uh, by the way, what is the material your shirt is made of? I certainly hope you don't expect me to follow you down there. The only thing dumber than hiking down into the gap chasm is to try and find a way around it. Not really, but there's no way I'm going to become dragon food for a game, even if this is the only route open to us. I'd rather spend some time looking for one of the bridges. Forget it, Doug. I'm not going down there. Hi, Doug. It's good to see you actually do believe in magic after all. What are you guys doing here? Into the chasm? I'm not sure I'd be very keen on the idea myself. You know there's a fire-breathing dragon down there, don't you? I don't know, but I wouldn't press my luck. What do you think, Jenny? It's a tough decision. I'll bet Sammy could be of assistance here. What do you think, Sammy? 
What's the quickest way to Humphrey's castle? Sammy seems to think the stairway is the quickest way across the chasm. That doesn't mean it's the safest route, but it's almost certainly the fastest. He likes to be referred to as Sammy or Sammy Cat. He sure does. I think I'd pick that route for my mundane. I'm not sure I know of any other options available to us. I don't know, Jenny. I really love Xanthanol. But I'd rather not take my chances with the dragon. He's got a pretty good batting average, I've read. Okay, listen up. I've got a solution that might suit everyone reasonably well. If Nod and I were to switch mundanes, we'd all be in the company of like-minded individuals. Doug and I will take this route. Nada, Kim, and Cyrus can explore other alternatives. What do you think? It doesn't matter to me at all which mundane I must accompany, as long as I'm not expected to enter the gap chasm. This does seem to be a very opportune moment to rid myself of you. I won't assume responsibility for Kim, however, unless she herself wishes for this game adjustment to take place. That's okay. I've read all about you, Nadanaga. I'll bet you'll be at least as good a companion as Jenny, but I still wish Doug would reconsider. It's very dangerous in the chasm, Doug. The Gap Dragon will flame you for sure. Well, good luck then. If we meet up again, we'll have to exchange stories of our different adventures in Xanth. Looked like it smarted. Stanley was only doing his job, but you've lost the game as a result. I'm afraid. How dare you address the king of the air, beauty mundane? What? How dare what? How dare what? How what? How dare what? Oh, Nada, I hope Doug is okay down there. He is an impetuous child, Kim. I hope he breaks his leg. 
How can you say that? I kind of like him. Oh, you do, do you? Maybe you'd feel differently if you'd had to shepherd him halfway across Xanth. But you were his companion. That doesn't mean I had to like him. You're just mad because he left you for another companion. On the contrary, I couldn't be more relieved. Excuse me, ladies. As interesting as you find the mundane boy to be, we still have to find our own way across the Gap Chasm. Ancient Mer legends tell of a hidden path that follows the edge of the chasm to the sea. If we can but find our way to the ocean, I will ferry you safely through the water around the edge of the Gap. The mundanes draw near the prize, Demon Santh. Do not fear for your precious enchanted land. It is you who should be nervous, Demon Earth. I have every confidence that my mundane shall be victorious. Such foolish creatures, working so hard when neither of them knows what is at stake. But you must admire their ingenuity. They would make a good pair, these two, if they were not pitted against each other in this struggle. You are overly sentimental, Demon Santh. It is a flaw in both you and the land that bears your name. But you may rest assured that I shall cure the land of this problem when I win the wager. You underestimate the power of sentiment, Demon Earth. Some forces are stronger even than magic. Soon you will see that this is true. Well, you've made it to Humphrey's castle, Doug. Now how are we going to get in? Hey, I'll bet Sammy can help. Sammy, what is the most direct path through this gate?
Cyrus. I know our love is no fluke. Yes, Mercy. From the moment I saw you, I was hooked. The scales fell from my eyes. I fell in over my head. Sigh. Yes, Mer. Let's swim away together. Good idea. Let's hightail it out of here. And what may I do for you, Doug Mundane? I know your name and much else concerning you, Doug, for I am a powerful magician, currently the most powerful in all of Xanth. I know of all your travels in Xanth. I was aware of your trials in Isthmus Village, the dangers you encountered in the Five Regions, your defeat of Computer and the Gap Dragon. I've even known the exact time of your arrival here for some time. I usually charge one year's service from anyone asking me a question. In your case, however, I will waive this fee, given the special circumstances. Ask away. First of all, it is no ordinary game. This game was constructed by two demons, powerful beings with little care for you and I. The purpose of this game is to settle an important dispute between them, one that will affect all things living and inanimate within Xanth. The stakes in this game are the existence of magic itself. If the demon named Earth wins, magic will perish from Xanth forever. If, however, the demon named Xanth should win, then magic will be preserved and Xanth, as you know it, will survive. You represent the interests of the demon Xanth. Should you fail in this game, magic will be lost to us forever. Yes, although she does not know it. Earth has broken some rules of this game without the knowledge of Xanth. He has forced Nara Naga to serve his will in winning the game prize. Precisely, Doug. You must claim the prize before Kim, or all of Xanth will be doomed, devoid of everything magical and good. Yes, you are, Doug. You have become a different person while you've been here. You have grown. You have learned to love that which you knew nothing about. You have grown stronger and wiser, learning from the land. Ask away. But ask quickly, for the existence of magic is at stake. The sword is an artifact of the ancient inhabitants of Xanth. It is one of three such swords known to exist in Xanth. This one's name is the Sword of Wisdom, for it conveys some measure of wisdom on its bearer once it has grown accustomed to them. How many jewels glow upon your sword, Doug? That's odd. The Sword of Wisdom supposedly has six stones. Perhaps you've not yet performed some important task required by the sword in order for it to convey wisdom upon you. Once activated with the six gems, the sword has a great power to repel and destroy evil. What else do you wish to know? You must find and claim the prize before Kim. It's not important, young man. What is important is that you reach it before Kim. She nears it as we speak. I know it to be in the gourd. 
hidden from general view. The gourd is a place not of this world. It lies beyond the boundaries of waking thought, through a door that only few may pass. Journeying into the gourd should not be undertaken lightly, for hazards and nightmares beyond imagination lie there. This is why Xanth and Earth have placed the prize there. Only the most daring and most skillful adventurer may hope to survive it. This is your hour, Doug. You must enter the gourd and preserve the magic of Xanth. This is the bad news, I'm afraid. Kim arrived here several hours ago and, under the rules of the game, I was obliged to tell her everything I'm telling you. I was, however, forbidden to tell her whose side she is representing in the game. She has already entered the gourd with her companion and is now drawing near the prize. One may only pass into the realm of the gourd by looking into the peephole of a hypnogourd, a common vegetable in Zam. Once a viewer looks into the peephole, their body becomes transfixed. Only their soul passes into that dark land. Not a problem, Doug. While Kim and Nada had their own, I am pleased to aid you in the only way I can. Take these hypnogourds and good luck finding the prize. So, now the mundane boy knows he fights for you, Demon Zanth. That meddlesome Humphrey has interfered with the game! It doesn't matter that Doug knows Demon Earth. True, he may work a little harder to capture the prize, but unless Kim discovers she represents you and the elimination of magic, it is still a fair contest. You are a fool to pin your hopes on a boy who didn't even care about Xanth when the game started. Perhaps. But in the course of Doug's adventure, the land has brought out qualities in him that he didn't know he had. Doug has learned a lot, and he has Xanth to thank for it. He now realizes Xanth is a special place that is worth preserving. Well, the battle isn't over yet, Demon Xanth. My girl is still ahead of him, and that Naga Princess isn't above trying a trick or two to make sure that Kim gets to the prize first. Thank you. 
You cannot win the game now, Doug Mundane. The prize is nearly within our grasp. Silence, stupid Mundane. Enjoy magic while you can. Don't worry, Doug. We can still beat them to the prize. Trust me, we have a little time. I think getting into the attic should be our primary goal. Let's go. <coughs> Ouch, that hurt. I did too. It was an honest mistake. Now how are we going to get out of this place?
Doug, is that you? There's a chance that I've got the wrong Doug, but I mean, my name's Kim. Do you? I hear you believe in magic. Unfair! I demand a rematch! You shall not get one, Demon Earth. The contest is over and you have lost. Because I am the victor, I am matchless. And therefore, I have no more matches to give you. Please, Xanth, spare me your puns. The magic I can get used to, but the puns are too much to endure. Of course I can spare you some puns, demon. I have plenty to spare. On this subject, you need not despair. Stop! Stop! I cannot bear it any longer! Bear it? Why, I have barely begun. Now that I have you over a barrel, there is no barrier to the barrage of embarrassing and bare-faced puns I can make. As one of my forebears, Baron Robert von Flaubert, used to say, I... Not a 89 take four. It looks like the only route available to us is into the mountain cavern. <laughs> <laughs> we do not want to get her in a giggly mood. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we at least try to fix it? One more time. Not a one on one. You getting this? Yeah, it's like a volcano or something. <laughs> oh. Okay. Don't worry about it. Headman 39, take two. Hello, mundane screen and beautiful Naga princess. Princess. <laughs> <laughs> but it is princess, right? Princess. It's princess. According to Michael. It? <clears throat> it's princess. <laughs> no, it's princess. You said uh. make him say princess. It's fine. Either way, it's fine. I can that's what he said, didn't it he? Is what he said. <laughs> Made it say, make it uh, say. No, I hate you all <laughs> right now. Um, let's do a, a really uh, more high pitched, silly version of this. 329, take two. Good, Dougie. <laughs> How do you know he's a he? Jenny 70, take one. I don't know. I just felt like he a he. <laughs> <laughs> he just felt like a he. Jenny 70, take two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wondering whether we pronounced it differently since it was spelled D U G. I thought maybe it was Doug. <laughs> Dig. Demon cutscene five. Take one. The meddlesome Humphrey has interfered with the game. May I have a restart? Sure, why not? Meddlesome Humphrey has interfered with the game. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Doug knows. Restart again, please. It, it sounds good. It's Levels? just that those, yeah, the game was really way, uh, yeah. way up above everything else. I yelled it. Yeah, don't I was yell. So excited. <laughs> okay. It's not nice to yell. Take this evil potion away from me and dispose of it somewhere. No one will ever find <laughs> it. <laughs> oh no, it's wearing off. She's turning back in the mob. A loaded hot dog bun. Now I've heard everything. Not a 195, take one. Can you think of a way of convincing that hound that you mean business? Did what? you hear that? Yes. Not a 195, take two. <laughs> Don't start. I'm sure there's something lying around nearby that could serve quite adequate. It's okay, I heard something there I too. <laughs> Was that a mouth noise? <laughs> you, you got ro rodents in here too? I think we should shake her. I think, I think we, should tick, we should tickle Lois. Does that mean we can kiss now? Absolutely not. <laughs> he didn't even let me sway. Sorry. <laughs> he wasn't really saying that, Lois. He, it's the line. As, oh, I'm sorry, Michael. I really thought you meant it. Autonomic reflex. Is this one try? No. No. I like it the way you read it. Rolling. Okay. Without the bird. Not a 101. Take three. Adequate containers for the foul mixture you brewed. 
you've brewed. I can do this. Again, it was it's my fault. Not that I wrote the damn shit. Not a 47, take one. Maybe you could open the door and see what's behind it. Perfect. Did, did, did that... Did my stomach go off <laughs> in I, your I, ear? Think... Deadman 51, take one. I recognize that. But why on Xanth are you handing it to me? And that's it for the headman. And that's it for the headman. You've escaped a terrible danger, Doug. But I fear that a mis... mis... <laughs> it wasn't even that funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need one of these for the end, so... Missy, Missy. Get this. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Thank you.